Welcome everyone to the 10th uh, ROS2 Hardware Acceleration uh, Working Group meeting. For those of you new to the working group, uh, this uh, working group particularly drives the creation, maintenance, and testing of acceleration kernels on top of open standards, particularly focusing on C++ and OpenCL for optimized ROS2 and Gazebo interactions over different compute substrates. Um, as usual, overpass meetings uh, will open up the mic for uh, those of you new to the working group to say a few words about yourself and introduce yourself if you wish. Uh, typically, what we do is we, of course, uh, say who we are and then um, how we are related to uh, hardware acceleration, in which organization we work, and, and that should be it. All right, so anyone that would like to share a few words? Go ahead, Jayam, please. Hi, can you hear me? Right. You can. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, this is Jayam. Uh, I am joining from Japan. Uh, it's midnight here. So, um, uh, so I'm, I have been very interested in uh, enhancing hardware acceleration capabilities in ROS. Uh, for a while, I tried to get in touch with the people in the AGI working group. Uh, but somehow through a Twitter interaction, I came to know of the hog. And this group has been much more active. I have read through the paper you're going to present today. Uh, and I have, I think I can contribute uh, to the hardware acceleration, you know, working group, add more boards to the mix and uh, to in general expand the support for hardware acceleration in ROS2. Uh, so I work for a company called Yanmar. It's a Japanese company and uh, I'm here representing myself, not my employer, uh, but I am a robotics engineer in my teacher. Yeah. Awesome, and thank you so, so much to join. I mean, uh, wow, it's super late there. So <laughs> really very much appreciated. And uh, if more folks from uh, Asia start joining, I think we can cycle between times so that it's more comfortable for you guys. Really open for that. So welcome. Thank you. All right, anyone else who would like to introduce uh, himself or herself? I can go. Uh, uh, my name is Elias. Uh, Elias Yagi. I'm based on in London. I'm working uh, as a principal software engineer for Medtronic, but I'm an open source software contributor and um, contributor and maintainer for uh, Meta Tegra. Tegra, I believe you use it or one of you use this. Uh, um, yeah, you can see me there. And yeah, I'm in more Meta Tegra community. You can see the NVIDIAs there. Anyway, this is me. Nice, to, awesome. nice to see you all. And awesome. yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy here if I can help or I can contribute with you guys. Yeah, let me know. Very welcome and glad to have you, Ilias. Uh, I think Thank it's you. fantastic to have more like Yocto uh, folks. We've I per personally, I've been pushing very much for adopting more and more Yocto increasingly to get you know to get towards production grade operating systems uh, because we, most embedded guys I know and I know a bunch of them uh, tend to uh, kind of like have a strong opinion about uh, anything else than Yocto. So I think it's always super nice to have uh, you know Yocto layer maintainers. So uh, Thank you. super nice. Thank you. All right, someone else? Hi, um, this is Divya. Um, so I'm joining from Apex AI in California. And um, yeah, um, I have my colleague already here, Matthias. He's, uh, he's, he's in like the Munich German office. So I recently uh, got into using Apex OS, which is a fork of uh, safety certified fork of ROS um, on um, like the GPU we have uh, using OpenCV, running some perception-based algorithms uh, using hardware acceleration. So I am very interested in this topic, and uh, I want to look for opportunities to contribute to the open source as well. Yeah. All right, Divya. Thank you, and very welcome. Glad yeah. to have you. All right, if that's it, um, let's move forward into the agenda. So once again, I'll just be pasting one last time in the chat the agenda for uh, those of you that joined a bit later, and I'll be sharing my screen just right now. There we go. I 
I think it's loading. Can someone please confirm? You guys can see my screen. Yes, we can see. Awesome. Great. So, um, so as a first uh, piece uh, in the agenda, as we've been doing um, over past meetings, a piece of uh, news is the fact that we've been putting together from um, the group that I represent, Acceleration Robotics uh, Hardware Acceleration in Robotics newsletter, which contains um, essentially news uh, related to how uh, hardware acceleration can be applied to robotics uh, and covers various silicon vendors, covers various companies making use of hardware acceleration. So if any of you has any uh, news to share, uh, feel free to uh, send a tip. Uh, and other than that, of course, uh, happy to um, refer you to that content. And if, if useful, please um, follow it up. Regarding participation, uh, if anyone wants to uh, essentially include himself or herself, uh, happy to do so, but in principle and to simplify uh, my life over uh, managing these meetings, I'll be just pointing people to the attendance that can be checked directly in LinkedIn within the event. I think that's pretty representative and it makes, as I said, my life easier uh, while doing then uh, managing of these notes afterwards. So that's one change we'll introduce from this meeting on. Um, and with that, I think we can jump into all business and administration. First, uh, regarding a topic that has been um, covered in the past but has uh, had a bit of uh, progress, the robotic processing unit. And just as a reminder, uh, the RPU is a, a robot-specific uh, processor that maps ROS and robot computational graphs um, efficiently to underlying compute resources, including, of course, various compute substrates, including GPUs, FPGAs, CPUs, uh, aiming to obtain best performance from a ROS perspective. Um, as it is detailed in the corresponding ticket, the objective of this is not precisely to build new hardware itself. Uh, we're very happy to take uh, off-the-shelf components, uh, maybe FPGAs, CPUs, and GPUs, put them together and prototype uh, what, com what combinations of architectures actually uh, do lead to best performance with ROS. That is the objective of this project initially. And then once we have more uh, intuition, uh, we will dive into uh, more designing hardware-wise. Uh, the target itself is to try to tackle uh, typical robotic flows, including sensing, perception, but also mapping, localization, and a few others. Um, last time uh, I introduced uh, the project, uh, I called for participation and feedback. Thank you, all of those of you who sent uh, feedback regarding that initial request for comments. Um, after reviewing the feedback and after having internal discussions, we have, uh, for now, uh, drafted a couple of use cases, one for perception, one for navigation, within perception will probably be using for uh, benchmarking and for driving the uh, RPUs development uh, two sub uh, tests uh, within perception. And then for navigation, we're still in discussions. There's been good feedback on that regard. Um, so please uh, keep sending it if uh, you have any and hopefully uh, within the coming weeks months uh, we'll uh, wrap the uh, the use cases driving the development and start splitting work so that we start generating some data and optimize the architectures um, on that regard as part of these discussions that have been uh, held after some of the feedback I identified the fact that some of you apparently um, feel very annoyed about the naming which is totally okay um, and some have proposed even some alternatives. Uh, I think the most uh, interesting one that I could capture was this uh, robotic system on chip, RSOC. Um, there might be others, there were a few others, which I'm not including uh, because I think they were a bit off topic. Uh, but please, if you have a strong opinion about this, uh, use the form, uh, which I have enhanced to include uh, yet another question. Uh, regarding this particular topic. So um, for those of you that already fill the form, please check it again, because there might be one more question for you to fill in. For those that haven't, um, well, this is the way uh, to send your uh, feedback so that I can collect it and then uh, reflect it in the working group. Um, one more item is the fact that based on the uh, results uh, that uh, these discussions are, are uh, essentially pointing out, I'll probably be reaching out in September, October to a selected group, um, which frankly speaking is gonna derive from uh, the ones that send feedback to split the work uh, amongst those ones that uh, volunteer to help and start uh, pretty much coming up with a first uh, draft of results regarding the RPU. Uh, we will also as part of that selected group be defining which specifically uh, specific hardware we'll be using. 
Um, and as I said, we'll be aiming to use uh, SBCs, so single board computers available off the shelf. We won't be creating hardware on this uh, physical hardware. On this first stage, we will, of course, uh, likely be creating IP, IP cores. Um, so yeah, that is that. And of course, uh, check out the form if uh, you'd like to be involved and have any thoughts on the topic. Uh, nothing else uh, to report regarding uh, old business. I encourage everyone to check the backlog that we've been keeping within the uh, working group. There's lots of topics that have been closed uh, over these past few weeks. Uh, and right now we've got in progress these items, which are in line with the uh, initial objectives we set at the beginning of the year regarding the uh, working group. And you can see them summarized in here, including the ones from last year. So there are a few that are in progress and hopefully will be wrapped, if not in Q3, certainly in Q4 uh, of this year. Um, if we're doing good, which sounds like uh, we should be doing uh, good, then in principle, uh, I don't see any reason why not to be a bit more ambitious. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty much uh, the place to uh, look besides the backlog. All right, um, progress review and uh, new business. Um, so regarding um, new updates, uh, I think um, it was about time we spoke about uh, new ports and new hardware enablement. And there's been a couple of initiatives that have been going around in parallel, I would say porting uh, the uh, hardware acceleration working group work towards new hardware to enable it. The first one uh, is the KR260, um, which uh, has been included in the repo over here. So the CREA KR260 Robotic Starter Kit, which is essentially a board that includes, actually I've got it with me in here, so hopefully you, can, you guys can see it. So it's a development board uh, produced by AMD. Uh, it features essentially an FPGA plus ARM cores. It has all sorts of I.O. You can see in here, it comes with plenty of uh, Ethernet. It has uh, an endpoint, a switched endpoint, which leverages TSN and can do essentially time-sensitive networking. Uh, and it has also tons of other I.O., uh, which can be leveraged for other matters. Pretty, pretty uh, nice board, uh, which I uh, personally have felt in love with after testing it for a few months now. Uh, and it features, of course, the, the tiny sum uh that uh amd has been producing uh this is just the, the red thing you see here with the heat sink and the fan what's what's uh, underneath is this tiny sum uh that you can of course use for your own project if you're productizing uh, your own robotic joints or sensors or cognition systems um so a fantastic thing uh that will be using i'm glad to report that um the complete uh, work of enabling it with the uh, ROS2 Hardware Acceleration Working Group capabilities is ready. The firmware layer is available uh, actually two days ago. Uh, and uh, you can see here the capabilities. It is featuring as a novelty. Um, this is shipping uh, the firmware that is in here is shipping with Ubuntu 22.04 root file system. So uh, for those lovers uh, of Open Embedded and Yocto like me, um, do not uh, be sad though, because it can be easily enabled. And I'm happy to help those of you that want to go that path. But um, uh, by default, it's been shipped uh, with Ubuntu, which I know many of you in the ROS world are very friendly or essentially feel very comfortable uh, with it. And yeah, the documentation and related is available from uh, AMD and Silent's official sources. Again, encouraging folks to check out the board. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a pretty piece. Uh, of, of hardware and we'll be using it for uh, future uh, development uh, substantially within the working group uh, because I'll be moving uh, forward, uh, at least for my daily work from the KV260 to the KR260. Now that's not the only update regarding um, new hardware. I'm also super glad to report the fact that the Ultra 96 P2 uh, port has been finalized. And just uh, for those who haven't been following this, uh, this work started in June 2021, so more than a year ago. And it was officially the first community-driven port, so it took a bit of discussions and alignment and back and forth, and we went through various uh, AMD um, by these uh, releases, but ultimately uh, Pedro Martos, so P. Martos in GitHub, uh, did a fantastic job. He's uh, essentially uh, completed a complete port of the firmware. Uh, and made it uh, available for everyone um, in here. So, um, so yeah, this is uh, this is really really nice. Uh, I've tested it out, and uh, with a few um, hacks that I had to apply that I'm still uh, digesting to report to Pedro, uh, things work. 
Um, so yeah, those of you um, that have that board know that uh, it can be it can be uh, now uh, fully enabled. And I guess the next step on this uh, regard would be to uh, essentially get more attention towards this, get more uh, interest, and try to elevate it towards maybe a higher position, so that uh, we also integrate in our uh, upcoming continuous integration and continuous deployment testing against some of the examples we've been building, and. Um, and those are particularly um, the ones that I'm mentioning are the acceleration examples. These are the ones we will be running against for uh, checking that the infrastructure works. Uh, so yeah, that's, I guess, the next step. Uh, this is what's currently uh, in the pipeline for the official boards, and hopefully uh, we can add more official boards to this uh, at least very soon. Also, and related to um, Metategra, actually, um, Yetson Nano uh, has been enabled as well, and there is a... Um, link uh, on this on this community supported boards there's currently nobody that i know at least right now offering public uh, support for this firmware layer um but it's been built using metategra as well as the uh, meta ross project so the uh, ross to um yocto layers um it is available in here it can be tested and if you have any issues as always just create a ticket or ping me and i'll be happy to uh try to reproduce your issues or help if i have bandwidth so yeah uh, kudos to the folks of metategra for making it so easy for us to uh to use it and hopefully we can get uh, more and more activity also on some of those boards that's pretty much uh, it regarding hardware. I've heard some uh, good comments uh, in the introduction regarding possibly more boards uh, being ported and maintained. So that would be super exciting. Uh, for those of you um, showing interest on starting uh, the process of porting it to new boards, uh, just so that you know, the instructions are um, documented in here in the community repo. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm going very fast for those of you new. Uh, but you have here, uh, besides uh, the reference platforms and the uh, community supported ones, you have a recipe on how to go ahead and port it to a new um, board. If you have, um, if you struggle or have issues, you can always create a ticket as it was done in the past and uh, ask uh, for support and we'll do our best to try to help you. But in a nutshell, the instructions are in here and you just need to follow uh, in principle Rep 2008, which describes the conventions and the architecture on how to enable new uh, new hardware. All right, so that is um, concerning reference hardware platforms and new hardware. Uh, last item that I had prepared was the ROS2 hardware acceleration stack, and some of the uh, aspects regarding uh, the ROS2 hardware acceleration stack were discussed in past meetings, so I will try to be brief also because as part of the guest talk that's upcoming, uh, I'll be touching also in some of those aspects, but I wanted to at least mention the fact that this has been included in the official community uh, repo so that uh, essentially we upstream towards this direction for what concerns future efforts. The, um, the stack itself is represented in here. The uh, objective of it is to uh, present the capabilities we are building uh, within the ROS2 hardware acceleration working group in a somewhat organized manner while structured with official standards and conventions in the uh, ROS world. Um, technically speaking, uh, the stack is a series of extensions of ROS2, which allow you to essentially get faster ROS2 exec execution and uh, a timing safe event-driven programming interface. And if this last bit sounds a bit confusing, this um, timing safe event-driven programming interface, um, ROS2 is precisely uh, offering this. Um, uh, sorry, an event-driven programming interface. Uh, ROS2 is based on the PubSub paradigm and as such presents uh, essentially an event-driven uh, architecture. So we'll be touching on, on, on this aspect in future meetings um, after the summer, I believe, um, that we break for the summer uh, quite a bit because uh, you'll see how important it is to optimize the data flows within these event-driven um, architectures. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the, the way to actually start optimizing your own computation on graph is to start paying attention to this, uh, to this stack, to these four conventions, um, providing when appropriate the corresponding implementations. Um, that is in part uh, what we do within this working group. Uh, we contribute and maintain open source implementations of various of these components in the stack. Some of them uh, are informative and we just make sure that the information available is proper. 
Some others um, actually trigger implementations, and for some of these, uh, we do provide such uh, implementation. The complete stack, however, is beyond the scope of, of the working group, especially uh, what concerns support and professional grade uh, capabilities. Uh, but there are some implementations out there of the complete stack that are starting to appear. Uh, Robot Core is one of them, and we'll touch on that just uh, in a bit, but there are others. So I encourage everyone to also check that out uh, and, and keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, I put together more resources in here in the notes just for the sake of uh, those of you willing to read more. So there is a blog post uh, describing a bit in more detail the stack, particularly because uh, I've been reached out by a few folks uh, asking questions about what is what regarding type adaptation and type negotiation. I think some of the diagrams that have been shared um, in this course have been a bit confusing. So hopefully um, the upcoming talk will clarify a bit of that. Uh, but also you have here a discussion in this course. So for those of you uh, that have been reaching out and I couldn't answer, please uh, don't be shy and feel free to just jump in here as many others and ask your question right away. Uh, I think this is the, uh, the way to, to tackle this out. Um, and yeah, um, that is pretty much it uh, for the agenda of today. Um, a few, I guess, administrative tasks is that, uh, before I forget, is that uh, we will be breaking uh, for the summer. There was, uh, there was a conversation to have a working group meeting during July. Um, and there was also a volunteer from a company that wanted to speak about uh, AI, uh, hardware acceleration for AI-based applications. Um, I'm going to hold on that possibly for after the summer for various reasons, especially because I think um, most of you deserve a good break. Um, so we'll probably re-engage after the summer, possibly uh, starting in September, we'll have the next meeting. Um, so yeah, that is, I think, uh, what was left regarding administrative aspects. Uh, and with that, um, let's dive into uh, the guest talk. I'm sorry you'll be hearing me uh, a lot today, but I'm super, super, super excited to be sharing this. Uh, it's the work of many, many, many months. Actually, I should say this started from early last year, to be frank. And um, it is uh, actually RobotCore, uh, an open architecture for hardware acceleration in ROS2. This work was performed in collaboration with Hardware University, with the systems architecture uh, department uh, led by VJ, uh, and also in collaboration with Sabrina and Brian. Uh, it's been a fantastic partnership, uh, which led to, I think, pretty interesting results. Uh, and uh, fantastic news is that, and I just learned about this today, so uh, that's what I thought it was important to highlight it. Um, it has just been accepted in the uh, IROS 2022 uh, session. So, uh, so it, it will be featured in Japan. At least there will be a presentation about it and I'll be around uh, to have a chat face to face with those of you that, uh, that show up. If not, uh, highly likely I'll also be joining Roscon uh, later on. So, so yeah, there is, uh, there is definitely a good chance to speak about hardware acceleration this year in Tokyo, sorry, in Kyoto, uh, Japan. Uh, all right, and um, regarding um, a self-introduction, I guess, so for those of you that don't know uh, me, uh, I'm a robotics architect, but also a part-time researcher with the system security uh, group uh, at the University of Klagenfurt in Austria. I kind of like break my time between uh, my interests on systems architecture for robotics as well as security. And with that, uh, what I'm going to do is show a few slides about robot core so can someone please confirm if you can see uh my screen uh full screen yes slides works all right awesome thank you guys so robot core as i said a hardware acceleration framework uh for ros2 providing um an open architecture uh the objective of robot core is to facilitate the process of building custom computer architectures uh, for robots uh which in a nutshell, we named robot cores, and that's essentially how the name appeared. Uh, as engineers, we don't break our minds about coming up with namings. So um, technically speaking, uh, robot core uh, essentially tries to propose this open architecture for hardware acceleration in a ROS2 centric manner by uh, extending the uh, common ROS2 uh, APIs and build uh, processes as well as tools available. It all dives down to the fact that typically you have a robotics application, uh, which is often represented in the form of a computational graph, uh, which runs in uh, the CPU most often. And this uh, robotics application, uh, again, has certain performance. Uh, with the default ROS2, you will run, again, mostly in the CPU. 
And it's only if you dive into the hardware acceleration world that you start seeing speed ups. But diving into that is complex. Uh, often the case, it is uh, a very vendor specific, uh, let's say, struggle. And whenever you want to compare things or further optimize mixing different compute substrates for different tasks, uh, you start diving into a complete mess of system integration, uh, which already complicates uh, the task of coming up uh, with optimization. So as opposed to this uh, whack-a-mole, uh, let's say, uh, sauce that has been uh, the trend in robotics with ROS and, and some of the forks of ROS2, which are CPU-centric. And whack-a-mole means in the sense that Essentially, you come up with a computational graph that runs in CPU uh, and that's uh, optimized and fine-tuned for that particular CPU and those bunch of sensors. But the moment you change a sensor or add a more powerful um, actuator that demands more uh, bandwidth or more interaction with the computational graph or even add more, I don't know, uh, more sensors because you have multiple cameras, additional cameras, then at that point, the, the whack-a-mole so starts crashing up and the flavor itself uh, is not so tasty anymore. So that is the current setup that we uh, often experience in robotics with, uh, with this CPU-centric approach. And hardware acceleration brings the opportunity to actually um, go towards these timing-safe, event-driven programming architectures. That's what I was referring before um, with that uh, itself. And we'll be speaking about this whack-a-mole metaphor quite a bit in upcoming meetings and how we can achieve additional determinism as well as higher performance and throughput, uh, higher performance meaning lower latency and throughput, higher throughput um, by leveraging um, custom architectures uh, using GPUs and FPGAs. Uh, RoboCore does precisely uh, that, opens the door for precisely that, uh, and it does so by um, essentially facilitating testing different options in a ros centric way so that you can uh, essentially keep up with your um, development experience and you only need to add some logic into your CMake list of TXT files, uh, corresponding to appropriate accelerators. And the same applies, of course, to the C++ code. You need to annotate it with the corresponding pragmas if you're using HLS or using the right flavor of language, if you're using CUDA or you're using ROCM, uh, whatever. So, um, so that is pretty much what's been enabled and allows to jump between different options to compare them to change architectures and altogether uh, it is enabled by having always a uh, kind of like um, benchmarking so quantitative uh, centric approach uh, and to do that we enabled this as part of the stack of the ROS2 hardware acceleration stack and, and we did it by essentially leveraging uh, past work in the community and particularly ROS2 tracing which we heard actually in the last uh, guest talk uh, at least an extension of it as well as the Linux Tracing Toolkit, LTTNG. Uh, so that is uh, a representation itself uh, of, of RobotCore. Now, um, for those of you concerned about whether RobotCore's Robot Core, Robot aim is to actually um, you know, program your node once and then run it in literally every single compute substrate in its most optimized uh, version and format, that is not really the objective. I mean. RobotCore requires you to provide the corresponding uh, flavor uh, for each one of the accelerators. Uh, and there is a rationale behind this as well. First, because uh, we're focusing again on ROS2. Uh, we're focusing on, on leveraging value for ROS2 users, not on solving um, someone else's problems, such as uh, what others are trying to do in the hardware acceleration world. Uh, and also, frankly, because many accelerators often come in binary formats, uh, which Frankly speaking, brings also an opportunity for many of you, uh, for many roboticists, to commercialize their algorithms, their own implementations in the form of a binary or an IP core, uh, which can be leveraged directly into an accelerator and thereby optimize the corresponding computation. So, uh, so that is something that uh, we kept in mind while architecting this. Now, um, trying to depict it, um, the technical value of robot core, uh, you have your uh, computational graph, which has a certain uh, essentially uh, timing, uh, performance, so to speak, uh, runtime uh, measurements, uh, technically speaking, and that is the speed up, uh, the baseline collected at the CPU of 1x, and then using robot core, we can optimize the computational flows, and we can, and that can lead to a significant speed up. Um, this uh, implies not only establishing new data paths between uh, the different components of the computational graph, but also by leveraging accelerators, acceleration kernels, either in FPGA or in GPUs. 
to give you a sense of intuition, um, this is uh, the results obtained in one of the past uh, demonstrators we uh, presented in one of the past meetings. Uh, it's been a while. The particular example and source code is available in here, so uh, you can check it out. And as you will see, uh, let me show you the accelerator. So leaving aside the host code, what's running in the CPU, what's running in the accelerator itself is a super simple uh, double vector add operation. So you can see here that a vector is being added. Uh, so two vectors added and the output stored in here. And there's a double loop, uh, which is uh, iterating sillyly just to generate some uh, number crunching. Um, so going back to the uh, presentation, this super, super um, silly example, uh, which is also represented on the right side of the slide with its uh, computational graph form, um, allows us by purely leveraging uh, robot cores uh, capabilities to go um, uh, all the way up to more than three times uh, the performance per watt. Uh, so that means that it's uh, essentially performing uh, from a power consumption perspective more than three times better uh, when compared to the default uh, ROS run in the ARM cores, in the same R cores, so, sorry, in the same ARM cores, uh, as opposed to robot core running in both uh, the CPU and in this case, the FPGA as the accelerator. So robot core can also, by the way, uh, perform uh, the same operation uh, and process, uh, not targeting precisely this hardware, but maybe targeting a GPU enabled hardware. That is also something uh, that's been uh, worked on and that's presented in the paper. Um, of course, uh, the performance depends always on the underlying accelerator, uh, but that is, uh, that is of uh, this particular example. Now, Robot Core also uh, pays attention to the fact that um, we don't only want to be uh, silicon vendor agnostic, but also want to make sure that we enable different robotics using different frameworks. So particularly the main driver of this working group is ROS2, and that's where most of our time is spent. But we are mindful about the fact that many people is using ROS, or many people might not even using uh, ROS2 and purely just relying on DDS. There are lots of use cases in industry uh, wherein this is the case. So Robot Core uh, definitely uh, encourages this and enables this uh, in, in essentially by ensuring that these primitives we added can be also ported to various build systems. So in the case of uh, ROS2, we extend Ament and Qualcomm, Ament being the ROS2 build system and Qualcomm the build tools. But similarly, it can be done uh, for ROS, even for old versions by leveraging Catkin or uh, related. So. Um, so anyhow, uh, this is a possibility, and it's something that uh, Robot Core brings in. Another good feature, and now it connects to one of the elements in the stack presented before, um, is the fact that um, we wanted to focus on delivering production grade um, road file systems, and that is why uh, we are mostly building for what concerns Robot Core and for what concerns the working group on uh, Yocto, open embedded, and flavors related to it, for example, Peta Linux in the case of AMD. Um, this gives us plenty of liberty to build and cherry pick things for our root file systems, uh, which not only leads us to uh, linear uh, root file systems, but also to optimize uh, the computational graph also by knowing exactly what we have, what we want to run, so on and so forth. Um, also, one aspect that's often uh, disregarded is the fact that Yocto marries very nicely with um, commercial and open source hypervisors, such as the SEN hypervisor. So it's actually very easy to uh, partition um, your hardware and uh, leverage these capabilities of hypervisors by using uh, Yocto-based uh, approaches, as opposed to maybe using some more general purpose um, root file systems, such as Ubuntu, which still can be enabled uh, on top of the SEN hypervisor. But there's always a, a leap in there um, because often uh, there's not so much support for it. So uh, Robot Core so far has been demonstrated uh, with these four manufacturers. We're still working uh, with, uh, with the intent to enable others. Uh, the plan itself, though, is to focus mostly on uh, best of class uh, single board computers and the, I would say the top and most used uh, boards to develop uh, robots. So if you have any tip regarding this, uh, please feel free to, to reach out. But so far, we think uh, we're being uh, pretty uh, representative. Um, regarding the capabilities that uh, we have also implemented recently in uh, Robot Core, and this, this is one feature that has been developed over the past few months and wasn't initially included in the paper because we were still uh, reviewing it, but it is a reality uh, today 
is the fact that we uh, included um, and especially examples and and demonstrated how we can leverage type adaptation. Uh, type adaptation is specified in Rev 2007 within the community, and it's as of right now merged into ROS to Humble and Rolling. It is included specifically in, in RCL CPP and provides a series of extensions uh, that essentially makes it easy to convert between ROS types and custom types uh, in C++. Um, and it can be applied to anyhow topics, services, and, and pretty much various abstractions within the ROS2 ecosystem. The best way to understand this, for those of you that have been asking, hopefully uh, this helps, is to uh, take a look at the upper um, side of the um, animation. And you can see how um, there is essentially a representation of a computational graph with three nodes, uh, three CPU nodes. And we can see how um, how essentially uh, the second CPU node uh, is, is engaging with uh, an acceleration kernel in either uh, an FPGA or a GPU. And how for every uh, jump in the graph, uh, the, uh, the ROS2 data type, the sensor messages message image is being transformed into CVMAT for the corresponding operations to be applied. This is how it operates right now by default in ROS2. So if, if you are passing data throughout the uh, computational graph, this is what's going to happen. Now, uh, REP 2007 and having your nodes implemented leveraging this capability means that essentially uh, by defining custom data types, you avoid uh, for intra-process communications. And it's important to note is for intra-process communications, you avoid uh, having to cast back and forth uh, and spend time copying uh, data unnecessarily. Um, some benchmarks uh, might come regarding this uh, in the near future. Uh, but nevertheless, I think it's pretty obvious how uh, this can have an impact performance-wise. Another capability that RobotCorp presents, and it's uh, covered within the uh, paper, is the fact that um, we defined an architecture wherein uh, we are extending the build system and the build tools so that we can switch uh, easily from vendor one to vendor two, or from board one from vendor one to board two from vendor one, because it uh, went end, end of life or because it's not available anymore given the circumstances we have in the semiconductor world. So um, this is important and it's more important now than ever, especially to give uh, the liberty of uh, to roboticists to pick what's best based on their use cases and not based on uh, whatever vendor they've been using uh, by default. Everything while maintaining a ros centric API for both develop development as well as development flows. So that is what Robot Core implements by compl uh, complying to uh, REP 2008. And, um, and yeah, that is definitely uh, one of the uh, goodies uh, behind it. One of the last things I'll share, uh, there are a few more, and I encourage you to read the whole paper uh, about it, is the fact that recently, and this is also one of, uh, one of the two things that we did not include in the paper, uh, but uh, we have implemented in Robot Core as of today, uh, type negotiation. Uh, type negotiation, essentially, and, and by it I mean uh, refer to Red 2009 in the community, um, is a series of uh, capabilities that can be implemented on top of the existing abstractions of ROS2 that allow you to negotiate uh, essentially how publishers and subscribers behave. And the best way to understand this is to look at the uh, bottom of the um, of the animation. So you can see in the bottom representation how uh, when it restarts, uh, the beginning robot core in, in the initialization phase, uh, uh, what's going to do is it's going to introspect itself, the computational graph, it's going to note that there are some interactions between essentially uh, nodes that have a relationship to, um, to accelerators, either in FPGA or GPU, and it's going to reconfigure the behavior of the publishers and subscribers so that we don't need to go back and forth for every single node. Uh, of course, the node's code is still going to run in the CPU, but the accelerators are going to be able to leverage uh, essentially their whole capabilities and the data flow is going to be optimized significantly. And now if you look at the top of the, um, of the image, you'll see how uh, in the default ROS2, uh, if you do leverage hardware acceleration, which you still need to do, uh, you will see how it goes back and forth CPU to accelerator. And of course, this is this is a huge bottleneck. We discussed this in the past. I think most vendors agree on this. And this is a fantastic feature that's being contributed, I think, by various groups. Uh, and that definitely um, is something that we've paid lots of attention and implemented it in, in Robot Core directly. So, um, 
the thing I personally like the most about Robot Core is that uh, it is particularly uh, thought for building uh, robot cores, so uh, essentially accelerators that are ROS2 API compatible. Uh, and that is what I encourage all of you to think about and to consider because that's how the community is really going to grow around uh, hardware acceleration. If we can just facilitate a piece of IP that just makes um, users out there um, faster for what concerns their computational crafts. In this sense, I wanted to present to you um, uh, essentially one of the of this robot course uh, that we developed within acceleration robotics and and we did it in a very uh, use case centric manner most of the work we do in acceleration robotics besides contributing to the community and and leading the uh, the working group focuses particularly on case studies and on on use cases for uh, final users final roboticists and that's what drove us to actually um, dive into perception quite a while ago um, for those not so familiar with uh, perception uh, in robotics, uh, the data obtained uh, from sensors like cameras or LiDAR is typically fed into the perception layer, uh, turning into something useful for decision making and planning typically. Perception in robotics thereby, uh, you could say, helps sense the static and dynamic objects and build a reliable representation of the environment, of the world. Uh, mostly using computer vision, but also increasingly uh, machine learning and AI techniques. Um, the perception layer is thereby responsible typically for object detection, segmentation and tracking. And within a typical perception pipeline, you can expect three things approximately. The first one is pre-processing. Uh, this gets followed by a um, region of interest detector and finally then a classifier. This is how often perception works uh, and understanding it is crucial to propose a hardware accelerated. Uh, implementation, which is precisely what uh, robot core perception uh, brings in, a hardware accelerated uh, perception stack that aims to reduce uh, the runtime latency and increase determinism as well as throughput. And the most important aspect uh, that we are very proud of is that it's API compatible with the ROS2 perception stack so that, frankly speaking, you don't reinvent the wheel uh, and you don't spend time uh, redeveloping what already works, which is the ROS2 perception stack. So. You can keep up with uh, the ROS2 perception stack. I think, and if it any, at any point in the future you feel you need a, a boost, uh, robot core perception essentially is one of the alternatives out there, which will help you do so. So um, to further illustrate this concept, uh, I just wanted to uh, steal away uh, from the folks of Boston Dynamics this, uh, this representation and walk you through how important it is hardware acceleration uh, in the robotics world, uh, because moving faster uh, or with more dexterity, uh, depending on how you look at it, requires uh, faster perception computations. Atlas uh, from Boston Dynamics, again, in this slide, um, uses perception, in this case, to identify, navigate, and uh, jump around obstacles. Uh, edge perception, in this case, because perception is happening at the edge, uh, is key to navigate under environments that change, uh, which are most of the ones you experience every day in, in the human world. So uh, Atlas itself in here uh, leverages uh, time of flight, uh, so depth cameras, uh, to generate point clouds uh, of the environment, particularly at 15 hertz, so 15 times per second. The point cloud is large and a huge amount of data, uh, and it needs to be processed directly at the edge uh, so that the time is reduced uh, and thereby directly in the robot. And if it does so, this leads to the smooth behaviors uh, you see reducing uh, any latency from the sensors and all the way into the actuator. So keeping it all into the edge uh, is crucial, lowering the timing, but still while providing determinism is critical in robotics and hardware acceleration empowers behaviors as, as, as such, and hopefully in the future, much, much more uh, impressive um, aspects. Uh, in particular, perception in this case extracts uh, surfaces from this point cloud, uh, which are then used to plan actions. Uh, where exactly it needs to put its feet uh, in order in the order of uh, tens of milliseconds. And again, this is only possible uh, at the edge thanks to hardware acceleration. So with this picture in your mind, um, maybe now it makes sense to dive down into uh, representation computational graph wise of what uh, robot core perception does. So if robot core allows us to optimize data flows, uh, uh, robot core perception is one of such uh, IP cores or robot cores that uh, allows us to further get a boost in terms of performance and um, go up to 100x in terms of speed up. And we'll see now uh, some examples of, of that. 
Um, for example, this uh, this one uh, packs together um, pipeline a perception pipeline using two simple uh, ROS2 nodes, uh, rectify and resize uh, node, and you can see the representation on the right side of the slide. Uh, and the source code of this, by the way, uh, should be in here. This is one of the examples um, involving um, graphs, and there's uh, there's this one, and there are a few others uh, regarding graphs, so you can check them out. If you have a curiosity on how this was built, everything is open source. And uh, by leveraging uh, robot core perception on this super simple um, computer vision uh, operations, uh, rectification, and our resizing, we can already see how from a, a runtime perspective, from a latency perspective, we can get a 3.5 times improvement uh, when compared to competitive solutions out there. In this case, the NVIDIA Isaac Ross uh, solution. And this was tested particularly uh, with this uh, hardware solutions, which are comparable in terms of, of the CPU side. Um, but this is not all. Um, it also it gets even more interesting if we don't only look at the um, runtime latency, but also at the power consumption. And uh, particularly if we take a look at the performance per watt, so the hertz that we get out of the perception pipeline, per watt, uh, we can see how the actual improvement goes all the way to six times. Six times means six times faster data rate, or in this case, not data rate, sorry, but data rate in relation to uh, the uh, watts. So this is significant uh, already, and it has an impact, a significant impact on even these simple uh, data flows, but things can get much more uh, juicy. Things can go um, really crazy if we start um, crunching, uh, or putting together more uh, operations that crunch more data, one of which is the Harris uh, filter, which is demonstrated in here. Uh, and again, it was uh, benchmarked against competitive solutions out there. And in this case, you can see in the graph, uh, we are not having, a, a, let's say, a multi-graph perception pipeline, just a single node performing a Harris operation. Um, so we could also pipeline it with uh, with rectify and resize. And, and if that is something you'd like to experiment with, by the way, um, I have good news because that is exactly what's prototyped in here. So the perception uh, three nodes uh, demonstrates particularly uh, such things. And I think this is the launch file that corresponds with it. Uh, yeah, this is just launching one of the binaries. But you can see in here uh, all of the source code related to how this was actually built, and how these three nodes are um packed together um but this uh this particular uh, example just uh, showcases harris uh, in an isolated manner and you can see how just with harris we get a uh, big uh speed up a uh, big speed up from a, from a kernel runtime latency perspective so we are we're measuring milliseconds uh, latency in this case uh, and particularly average um runtime latency by the way as we've been doing in previous benchmarks um, and the last one I brought for you today uh, is one we conducted not that long ago, uh, which uh, uses the histogram of oriented graphs, or HOC. Also measuring kernel runtime latency, and in this case, getting 500x, so more than that, actually. Um, so again, this just gives you a quick peek into the possibilities. If we start composing different nodes, uh, it actually explodes in terms of speed up. And uh, this is somewhat uh, the direction towards what we are working uh, with Robot Core. I just wanted to highlight uh, real quick the fact that uh, the real beauty is at the uh, Robot Core's side, so at the IP cores that you can create, or at the accelerators you can create in a somehow uh, vendor agnostic manner, uh, regardless where uh, you want to run them. Again, either GPU or FPGA. Um, we've put together the pieces so that you can start prototyping uh, today uh, with, we hope, the most popular uh, vendors. And again, the objective of this all is for you to start building your own uh, robot course. Um, most of the components, uh, specifically the basic building blocks of robot core uh, that are described in the paper are open source and you can check them out, you can extend them, you can contribute please contribute, send pull request. Uh, everything is available, or at least should be referred within the ROS Acceleration Organization. Um, and again, uh, we look forward to, uh, to hear from you and to get your contributions. Some of the capabilities that were explained today, however, uh, have not been uh, made open source and, and are not part of the initial uh, paper, mostly 
uh, because of the fact that uh, we worked uh, on it afterwards. And also because, frankly, um, the only way to ensure professional grade uh, quality and documentation as well as support is to actually try to uh, somehow fork it and see which one of you uh, is actually interested to drive this uh, forward. So if you're considering uh, to use hardware acceleration and wish to avoid uh, vendor lock-ins, um, in your research or industry projects, uh, consider using uh, RobotCore. We're happy to talk with you about options. And if uh, you prefer instead to enable um, the uh, architecture and the uh, ROS to hardware acceleration stack in your silicon, um, there's definitely also uh, room for conversations and bandwidth for opportunities together to bring this to the community uh, in the best way possible. So that is pretty much it uh, regarding RobotCore. I just wanted to uh, make sure I, again, um, send kudos for the folks in Harvard who've been extremely helpful in uh, putting this all together. Again, uh, this work will be presented uh, again in face-to-face uh, -face in Kyoto, uh, Japan, in IROS uh, 2022. Um, so if you're around or if you were thinking about going now, hopefully you have a good reason uh, to go. And with that, uh, I think we have some time for questions. So happy, happy to take any. Hey, Victor, it's uh, Dirk. Hello. Hey, um, before we break for the summer, I just wanted to give an update on the stereo image proc. Um, Please. I got the kernel to link and it looks like the node runs, but I, I'm, I might need help uh, testing and putting something together in gazebo. Okay, so um, just to get everyone in the same page. Um, so from the working group perspective, um, we have been maintaining this fork of the um, image pipeline package. And you can see in here that there is, um, there is this ROS2 uh, fork, uh, sorry, ROS2 branch that again forks the official one and has a series of contributions to enable um, capabilities both in FPGAs, popular FPGAs and, and GPUs. So Dirk, uh, so far the contributions have focused on uh, monocular uh, camera examples and, and notes, uh, but Dirk um, has been working on a pull request uh, enabling uh, stereo capabilities. Um, I haven't had the time to be frank, Dirk, to uh, take a closer look at this ever since, uh, but I think this is a great chance for those of you uh, showing up today to maybe uh, start contributing, maybe take a look and maybe give uh, Dirk uh, part of your time so that we can get this uh, on. Um, I'm going to break for summer <laughs> soon, Dirk, but uh, if this hasn't advanced much, I definitely can try to um, save some time after summer and maybe uh, try to push you. Uh, my advice would be, uh, Dirk, though, have you checked, uh, have you checked with uh, this other user uh, who is coming from uh, PL? PLC2, it's another company um, focused on FPGA, it's uh, based in Germany. And they, uh, they did a pretty nice, um, I think, implementation also of some of the matching uh, components. Have you, checked, uh, have you checked this out? Yeah, I've looked at it. Um, I haven't really been able to, to contact that person, but I think he's, he says he's got something running. Okay, so maybe um, what, I, what I'd recommend is, um, if, if you're stuck, why don't you maybe create a, an issue, um, maybe in the community repo, if, if not available in here. And we try to get you two guys together, plus some of the folks in the community who wish to uh, contribute or help. Uh, and if I understood you properly, uh, Derek, what you need is help with uh, Gazebo, as well as uh, getting things to build. Is that correct? Um, I mean, I've, I've got a running node. It loads the kernel, uh, okay. the acceleration kernel. Um, but I mean, I don't have the hardware to test it, so I'd have to put something together in Gazebo. Okay, um, I think we can take this offline. So uh, feel free to um, feel free to open a ticket, and and we'll take it from there. Uh, I think I have a few ideas on how to enable you with the right hardware, and connect you with the right folks who can give you hardware. So uh, that's one thing we can explore. But again, let's see what people can offer, and and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Dirk, for bringing that up. Yep, no problem. Cool. Hi. All right, uh, what, and, questions? And Dirk, sorry, uh, Dirk, if you need some help with CUDA uh, or, you know, Jetson has this new library called Vision Programming Interface VPI that also works on x86. 
and uses zero copy and everything natively. So if you need any help in that, I'm more than willing to help. Okay, is this for um, GPU? Yes, for GPU, yeah. Okay, okay I'm running on the, the KV, sorry, to, I didn't clarify. I'm running on the KV260, um, but I have a Jetson Nano and I wanna go through Victor's uh, Yocto build. So, but yeah, I'll definitely send you an email. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, please add me on the loop, I can help as well. Cool. Now uh, more in the Tegra side and the uh, GPU, CUDA, TRT, uh, up to you. Let me know. Yeah, just just uh, post your emails in the chat, and I'll uh, I'll send it out like a mass email. Yep, we and I'll I'll get offline with you too, Victor. Yeah, I mean, I, I, in, just in the chat, I saw guys that uh, so Soren commented that um, that they got it working at PLC two, uh, Dirk. So maybe you wanna um, you wanna reach Soren for wrapping your current uh, FPGA implementation, and then maybe just raise a ticket in the community to get together Ilias and and. JM and, and let's try to start working towards this uh, no uh, BPI or GPU enabled direction. Okay. Though, frankly speaking, uh, out of memory, I do think that NVIDIA do provides, uh, or do provide, sorry, um, a stereo, uh, a st stereo capabilities for image pipeline, but uh, they can confirm. I don't know. Gordon, is, is that the case? Yeah, there's a stereo image proc that's available with hardware acceleration and Isaac Ross. Yeah, and there'll be a, two new um, stereo-based perception modules that will launch today. Cool, yeah, I think I think that is the case, yeah. Here here they are, cool. Yeah, folks, so I think there is um, there's good, a good starting point from this one. Good stuff. All right. Okay, any more comments uh, or questions? Uh, just sticking with the theme of GPUs, um, you mentioned that the aim of of robot robot core is not to run uh, nodes as fast as possible on the on the on every platform. Uh, now, in this respect, I think uh, in terms of GPU acceleration, I think you exposed. I went to the Jetson Nano uh, repository. I think you're using CUDA acceleration, but that is exposed through a VPI backend of some sort. Um, so are you planning to use Tensorati? Because that really does uh, work much, much better than CUDA in some cases. Not at the moment. So uh, currently the firmware provided for the uh, Yetson Nano um, was just an enabler for validating a particular uh, use case. Um, I'm sure that there's many optimizations available, but right now uh, we don't have bandwidth. So uh, We'll push that towards the community or media to to contribute if they think that is that is important. Uh, what I'll what I'll just clarify though, uh, GM is uh, maybe I need to rephrase what I what I said. So, what I meant um, in this slide, uh, what I meant in this slide by the fact that um, we are not focusing on converting C plus plus source code uh, to its most optimized format for each accelerator. Um, means that uh, we don't magically transform your C++ code into CUDA or into HLS. You, you need to do that yourself. Uh, and, and that needs to be understood. That's what we wanted to clarify. We, we, so Robot Core and, again, many of the components open sourced of Robot Core give you capabilities to um, go ahead and keep up with your ROS2 centric development flow uh, while introducing your corresponding accelerators. But it's up to you to develop those accelerators because they are very use cases specific in most cases. And also because in some cases you'll only have the binary. So, um, so that's what we meant by that. Of course, and now linking into your question, of course, uh, the firmware uh, layers need to of course support those corresponding components. So if TensorRT is something that you're going to be leveraging in your accelerator, of course you need to add it. Uh, and for that, you need to go back to uh, Metategra and that's where Ilias comes in. <laughs> No, the reason I'm asking is because there are uh, the newer Jetson boards have some accelerators like uh, PVA and uh, deep learning accelerators that are only that can only be used using tens TensorRT. You can't use CUDA. So uh, if we kind of ignore TensorRT, then we are kind of leaving a lot of performance and a lot of silicon unused, especially on those boards. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. More questions. 
Well, I think then uh, that's it. We've uh, run uh, three minutes past uh, the time. So uh, thank you, everyone. We had a fantastic attendance today. I think the highest uh, ever that I've seen in any working group. So big success on that end. Um, for those of you new to the group, please stick around, uh, start contributing, and uh, looking forward to the next meeting. As I said, we're going to make a break. Probably we're going to re-engage in September after the summer. But um, stay tuned. Uh, lots of exciting stuff coming up uh, hardware acceleration-wise. Uh, Ross Chu uh, talks will be published uh, very soon. and Hopefully, we'll have lots of hardware acceleration this year. Thank you, everyone, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.